graphing with phase shift. So far we've graphed with amplitude and period, and I think that you've done a very good job with that. Uh, but first, as it says here, why don't we determine amplitude, period, and phase shift, just so we have a little bit of practice on that. And then we're going to graph it on, on the ones we have right here. Well, amplitude, period, phase shift is about how I'm going to write them. Amplitude. One, very good, because remember it's that number out front, which happens to be a one. And what does that mean again? It's going to go up one and down one from the middle. Period. What's cosine's normal period? So yeah, it's 360. And then you have been taught to, well, is this angle right here in the form you were taught to have it? Yep, it's 1 theta. That's how you were taught to have it. So you should look at this number out front, which is also 1. So you divide by 1, and it's 360. So nothing's really happened to the period here. But there is a phase shift, meaning the entire graph has been shifted. And how far has it been shifted? Well, it's been shifted 90 degrees, but which way? To the right, because remember, it's always the opposite of what's in there. So positive 90 degrees. And what that means, as far as we're concerned, is that it got moved to the right 90 degrees. And if our period's 360, I would stick with that strategy of having one period in both directions. Because remember, once you get this graph, you can always alter it to be the entire graph if you have to. Or you can alter it to be whatever graph you're being asked to put on there. Okay. And of course, zero degrees in the middle. How about my uh, Y tick marks? I probably go up here, go down there. What is probably a logical choice? Yeah, one and negative one, nothing too tricky about this one because the amplitude's you know, not any higher than what it was before. So basically, do you agree this is pretty much just the regular cosine graph just shifted 90 degrees to the right? Is really all it is. And for those that want to see it, let's go ahead and do the theta and Y table to get an idea of what it looks like, just to have that handy. And I'm guessing we're going to want that. That has proved helpful in the past. Okay. First one, zero. Zero, one. Negative one, zero. And zero, negative one. Those are all very important. So if we're going to graph this, what's probably a good place to start? Yeah, zero. And then we just kind of move our way over, right? Isn't that normal what we do? But I would strongly recommend when you have phase shift involved, please make sure you take your time and remember that for theta, you actually are substituting in zero. And what that means is over here in our equation, we are to put zero right there. So am I taking cosine of zero? No, you have to do zero minus 90. So I'm taking cosine of negative 90 degrees. Does everybody see why? Everybody see that? And where is negative 90 degrees on my unit circle? Yeah, at the bottom. All right, zero, negative one. So right here is where negative 90 degrees is. And we're supposed to take cosine there, which is, are we supposed to do anything else over here in the equation? We found out that this much of it is zero. So is anything else going to happen? No. Is that where we're used to having cosine start is right there? Is that where we're used to it starting? No, we're used to it starting up, right? But that's where this one's going to start. Now, should we change up what we've been doing? Should we maybe go to like 10 degrees for the next one? Or should we just go to that next tick mark? Yeah, just go, which happens to be, if you look right here, is... 90 degrees, and let's see what happens. So now you have to put 90 degrees in for theta. And then you take 90 minus 90 is 0. Cosine at 0 means you have to look over here. And cosine at 0 is 1. And again, is there anything more I have to do to it? Nope. So at 90 degrees, we're up at 1. And I think it's pretty obvious that we would go to 180 degrees next, and then probably 270, and then probably 360. So you're starting to see how the strategy I've given you earlier really is fairly helpful. So 180, now remember though, you have to put that in for theta. So if I put 180 in for theta, what am I actually taking cosine of? Cosine of 90, right? Because if you do 180 minus 90 is 90, so then take cosine of that. And 90 degrees is right up there. So cosine is 0. Again, we don't have to do anything more to that. Not really sure why I changed colors again. I think we probably have a pretty good idea what's going to happen at 270. Probably down to negative 1, but let's just make sure. 270, you put that right in there. 270 minus 90 is 180. Cosine at 180 is negative 1. And 360 means we kind of got right back to where we started. And so this is the start to our graph. And now that we have the right 
the right side of this is the left side pretty easy to figure out where that's going to go probably is so how about negative 90 degrees where, where would that be negative one right back up to here back up to there back up to there there it is what does that look like yeah that's sine's graph it's exactly sine's graph because sine and cosine are just 90 degrees different so I shifted it 90 degrees to the right, and there's sine. Now, for those of you that are curious, obviously the green one is what we had to graph, correct? What I'm gonna, when I tap the screen, I'm going to bring up just regular cosine. Okay? Do you agree that's regular cosine there in red? Do you agree? Like I told you, this is what I was trying to explain before. Take the graph, pick it up, leave the axes where they are, and just shift it over 90 degrees. Is that pretty much what we have right there? Pretty close. You just picked it up, slid it over 90 degrees, and that's pretty much what we graphed, give or take a little bit on the ones and negative ones, all right? because it's pretty hard to match it up perfect. See, I'm just sitting here. But that's basically what happened. Okay. So basically, we took that red graph, slid it over 90 degrees to the right, got the green one. That's what phase shift does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So any questions on that? Yes. We shifted it to the right 90, and it ended up being sine's graph because of the relation. Okay, how about amplitude, period, and phase shift for this one? Ms. Piper. So you said how much for period? 360? A positive or negative? Positive 90. Well, as you take a look at it, let's see if we agree. Amplitude of 3? I agree. Period of 360? I agree. Phase shift of 90? Yeah. Now, why is period 360? Aren't you supposed to divide it? Because sine's normal period is 360. Aren't you supposed to divide it by that 3 out front? No, you're supposed to divide it by whatever's out here, which is a 1. Now, notice, have I given you any of them where it's been distributed yet? No, that's when you want to take them out because that's going to make life a lot easier for phase shift because if it's ever just a 1 theta or 1x, the opposite of that is just your phase shift, which is nice. So here we're going to take the sine graph. We're going to make it three times higher and lower. We're not affecting the period, but we are going to shift it 90 to the right. So based on my suggestions, you're probably going to go over here, and what number am I going to put over on that tick mark? 360. And then over here, negative 360 because, again, one each way. And then you probably can do these now. Yeah, 3 and negative 3, right? That's pretty straightforward. And if you get really good at these graphs and you really know them very well, uh, you can get going pretty easily with these. But for now, I think it's our best bet to stick. And that's the worst theta ever. Stick with a theta y table. And that would be the second worst theta ever. So again, these are probably going to be important values. Where should we start? Might as well start with zero. Now remember, zero is the actual theta we're substituting in, but it is going to change. So you put theta there, and then you subtract 90, we're at negative 90 degrees, correct? What is sine at negative 90 degrees? Well, negative 90, again, negative 1, right? It's the y value, so it's negative 1. So this portion of this problem so far is negative 1, correct? Which you then take times 3, so it is... Okay, so we're down here. Once again, are we used to sine starting off of the origin? No, sine normally starts right on that xy axis, so this will be a little different. Once again, we're probably going to go to what next? Might as well go to 90 and then probably 180, 270, 360. Again, not because they're necessarily easy, but because of what we know, those are our tick marks. You know, 90, 180, so forth and so on. So we put 90 in there. So again, 90 right here. So 90 minus 90 is 0. What's sine at 0? It's sine at 0 is... 0 times 3 is? Zero. Okay, so 90 degrees is 0. 
you probably have a pretty good idea just based on your knowledge what's going to happen at 180, just based on kind of how you know sine and cosine now. But 180 means you put 180 right in there again. And 180 minus 90 ends up being 90. So you take sine at 90, which is up there, and sine there's the y value is 1. 1 times 3 is 3. So 270 is your next one. I think we probably have a really good grasp of where that's going to go, but we might want to make sure. 270 minus 90. It's 180. You sign at 180. Zero. Times three is zero. And this is going to get in the way down here, but that's all right. We'll make it work. Does that look like cosine's regular graph? Not really. It's close. But cosine starts up at three normally, or up at one, really. And so it's close, but I think we can figure out the left side now. Yes, I hope this one does not look like a W, unless you turn it upside down. Now, here's the key. Right there is normal sign, give or take a little bit. So if that's normal sign, did we take care of the amplitude? Is that obviously three times bigger up there in the blue? No. And then did the period change? No, still 360 to 360. But did we take this graph and shift it 90 degrees to the right? Look at right down here. Because where did this point technically end up? It just moved over and ended up right about there, right? Except three times bigger. This one just slid over and ended up there. This one slid over and ended up there. You get the idea? They all just slid over that 90 degrees. Okay. And so there's what it would look like on your calculator. So we must have done it right. Okay. Any questions on those so far? Okay. Why don't you get the amplitude, period, and phase shift for your next problem?